Welcome to beautiful Fall City, Washington, a town platted in 1887. Small, but full of history and a rich past that gives this town its unique and lively culture today. We're here today with Dwayne Isaacson to learn the history of the Isaacson Sawmill. He thought he had spruce, but it's not. If you want to smell it, the loggers called it, but you smelled it. It's it really, smell like it. it's really white fur or alpine fur. You put it in your house for Christmas trees. They do grow up in Cedar Falls above North Bend. We used to go up there with kids to get a Christmas tree. They grew right alongside the road. They're probably all gone now because of people done that. You gotta go, you gotta go, it's an elevation tree. But you can bring it down here and it grows like crazy. Look at the growth ring in it. But that's a year, each one of them lines. That's a line. You, you got eight inches to here and there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. Oh my goodness, that's the best one. This is the, this is the same wood, this is my sample. Yeah, I can see it quite so. Or no wool. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and Weyerhaeuser considers it uh, lesser quality than uh, hemlock. They usually grind it. They ground it for the the floor and the plywood. Oh, huh. yeah. When it comes from Clayalum, I tell people don't even bring it over unless you want just two by fours because when it grows over there, it has a lot of cracks in it. You probably experienced that. And I don't know if it's from frost. It shouldn't be from frost because the tree grows at a cold temperature. So mm -hmm. I don't know why it does that. It'll have black lines and cracks in it. And you can't. Yeah, get I got grand fur on my property. I've been some in the past. And this is old growth fur, finer grain. Maybe the years didn't last as long then. <laughs> Maybe the earth turned faster. But you see how close that. together that is. Yeah, VG fur, vertical grain. And Each that's a, year, yeah, it? that's a piece of vertical grain. This is really good stuff. And this is a vertical grain in uh, second growth. See the difference? How fast this one grew than this one. This one had a lot more sunlight. Yeah. This one grew and had more competition to grow. It grew slower. Very slowly. Very slow. It has to be like decades, decades. Second growth cedar, same thing. This is cut vertical grain too. First is a piece of, that's western hemlock cut vertical grain. They still cut a lot of that for your moldings in the houses. It's pretty popular for that. Especially high elevation hemlock. It's gotta be clear though. That pine, not native around here. People plant them, but they don't like our heavy snow. Lady across the road planted pine. First heavy snow, out went the lights and come down on a power line. They're used to frozen snow that don't stick to the limbs like they do around here. Here's something I call junk wood. It's called redwood. Redwood that grows around here goes crazy because it's a tree that don't get water naturally. Grows on the coast, lives off more of the mist coming in from the sea. You plant it here, look what it does. This is a year, every one of them lines. Yeah, that's all that's just not a so decade. There's no, there's no value to it. The loggers can't sell it. No mill will buy redwood cedar that grows around here. So I get it. Ends up here. <laughs> Cut it into something. This is a really good wood here. It does grow up in Salton Basin in Washington. That's Alaska cedar. Your totem poles that the Indians in Alaska were all carved out of this wood. There's people every once in a while come in here and want to know if I got any. They want to do some carving. I'm, I don't carve, so I don't know what the, why it's better than anything else. But they're always looking for it. This is another cedar. I think it floated down the coast. The Alaska cedar floated down to Oregon. They call it Fort Orford cedar. This one was planted up at Preston. And I cut a man a, a kitchen floor with it. 
he had oh maybe half a dozen trees that they bought you know on a nursery and planted this is Lebanese cedar the cedar from Israel that part of the world same way people buy that uh, nurseries bring it home and plant it this is a fragrant wood potpourri you want to smell that smell for years and years and years So you take the sawdust and put it in a jar, put it in your house. Put it in a candle. This is a good wood. This is our our native spruce. Tough. The old days, all your wooden ladders made out of spruce. Alder. Happened to be a piece of clear alder. Yeah, when I cut that, now there's some buried under here. If you dig it out, the whole place will smell. This is our maple, it grows right here. Hardwood to work with. When it dries, it cups and twists, and that's why you look at a basketball floor, you never see a board over two feet long. Mm. <laughs> Hold on, Allie. <laughs> Can't make anything long out of it. This is uh, a piece of locust, black locust. And you see the little dots Where'd that in come it? From? Come from Seattle. They were taking it down. A man come by and stopped him from cutting it up into small firewood. And he brought in uh, maybe a half a dozen small logs up to eight, ten inches, long enough for me to cut, eight feet long. And I don't know if this is natural to the wood or that's woodpecker been in there. Put the, see the dots. Does all locusts have that? I don't know. It's the first time. This is uh, our cherry. Cherry does grow wild in the woods around here. That's why we have Cherry Valley and Duval, because there's so much of it down there in area. It's a, it's a very good wood. It's Again, it's hard to work with. It likes to curl up when it dries. All your grandfather clocks are made out of cherry. This is a wood from the East Coast that somebody brought out to the this comes from Oregon. Man brought it all the way up here from Oregon, from the Willamette Valley. That's black walnut. That's the only wood that when you guys work with it, you've got to wear a mask. That's poisonous. If you go online, look up poisonous wood. This will be one of them. Why is it poisonous? It just is. <laughs> <laughs> is it sawdust? You can take the sawdust. You can take the sawdust and put it on the grass. It'll kill the grass. If you put it in your horse's stall, They'll absorb it through their feet, and they'll have kidney problems. So if you put it on the floor right now, it, or... If you laid it there, probably, if you laid it there, but it would, it would die anyway from not having sunlight, so you could, it wouldn't be a good comparison. So it's not poisonous right now, right? No, no. But this, this fine sawdust that comes out, you don't want to breathe it. That's I, know, I imagine early That's days, people that made black wood. walnut That's furniture black probably walnut. Didn't, weren't, didn't have very long life. <laughs> yeah. They didn't know. This is a very heavy wood. This this has been in here under the shed for probably 15 years. But feel how heavy that is. Oh wow, this is heavy. Than expect. It'll barely float probably if you put it in water. I agree. That's the thing. It's barely gonna float. That compared to anything else, that's really heavy. I forgot what it was. Ash. And this is. This is baseball bat wood. Baseball bat. Look for it. That's heavy too. <laughs> Real oh, heavy. This is heavy. Look at the bats out of ass. Hold on tightly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No one hands. Yeah. Anyway, the guy that brought that tree grew in Fall City. One of the pioneer trees up there is dying, and they brought it in here. And I, I told him, I says. Uh, you want me to cut you some three by threes? You can make some baseball bats. Nah, he said, but by that night he called me on the phone and says, hey, yeah, cut me some three by threes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good reflex. You got me on that one. I forgot what this one is. Oh, chestnut. Chestnut. That's another one. <laughs> See if I had to drop that on your foot. <laughs> yeah, that is heavy. That's heavy. And this is another one of Brian's boards here. It's heavy because it's still wet. Oh, wow. Green. 
So a tree when it's just been fell, what's the moisture in a typical tree then after it dries down? It looks, a lot big, of the weight is water. Big difference, yeah. Half the weight of a tree is water weight. And you typically will dry it down to 12, 15%. Yeah, that probably weighs 20 pounds. And I think it's because it's a tree that grows with less water too. It grows more higher elevation. They bring it down here and it sucks up more water and it grows fast growing in. That's what redwood, when I'm sawing redwood and the tree just come in, there's actually a stream of water running out the bottom of the saw. <laughs> it's almost identical to our cottonwood as far as weight and sawing fresh cotton. And if you lay it out here to dry, it'll get a black mold on it before it dries. It mold a couple days, yeah. But because it's so fast growth, a week's time is dry. What was that wood that you cut for the shipyards? It was like cutting steel? That was uh, ironwork, ironwood. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, South America. That was uh, cut for, uh, my dad cut that for the shipyards in Kirkland. <coughs> for the ships they were building, the railings and anywhere where on the ship the decks were the hat covers were made out of iron wood. I thought it was I have a few pieces of that at home. That's what it is. And as far as antique tools, to lift a log 